this painting video is going to be uh, kind of a longer painting walkthrough, I think. I'm going to aim for making this uh, a little more detailed than some of the previous ones that I've shared. We'll see how long it actually ends up being, but uh, so let's get started. So I start these portraits usually. This is going to be a figure study of a woman uh, with a strong light source. So uh, I start this one off with oil paint that's thinned down with linseed oil. And it's just kind of a combination of uh, some raw umber mixed with some ultramarine blue. I think I have a little yellow ochre in here and may perhaps maybe some cadmium red as well. I think it's just kind of a going for a, just sort of a basic brown. Uh, I thin it down with linseed oil and just sort of really push the brush into this oil painting paper. Uh, it's made by Strathmore. It's kind of a textured paper that's pre-treated with uh, a substance to kind of help the oil. Uh, it's kind of uh, textured like canvas a little bit. So I push that brush really, really far into the, the canvas paper. Uh, and then I switch to just straight up oil paint. I don't really use any anything extra with it. Um, I, frankly, I, I don't <laughs> fully know how to use it. Uh, I haven't experimented much with that, so I really just go for, for oil paint straight out of the tube. Um, and you can see in this video, I've also included another embedded video of my, my uh, palette, and I've got this synced to the actual painting. So uh, you should be able to get somewhat of a sense of how I mix the colors linked to how the colors are being applied uh, onto the paper. So um, my hope here is that it's not too fast. I did have to speed up the video because this painting took about three hours total and I didn't want to share a three hour long video. So uh, I've sped this up. Um, it makes it kind of hard to see the, the palette mixing process. Uh, perhaps I can find some shorter painting and get it closer to real time. That, that actually might help a little bit, but hopefully this isn't too bad. So uh, with the painting in a stage that it, it, it's on screen right now, so I usually start these, uh, so I get that those basic shapes in, and then I try to start filling in uh, larger shapes within the face. So kind of within the outline, almost treating it as if it's like a, a sort of a paint by numbers. Like once you've got the structure in place, however it is that you choose to do that, whether it's uh, by freehanding the figure, uh, which takes a lot of practice, or uh, you can use a grid or um, you know a projector. There's lots of different ways that you can get your basic structure, your outline in place. Once you have it in place, uh, it kind of gives you the container to put those paint shapes in. So you can start identifying, like here is a certain specific color. It's got a certain lightness, it's got a certain darkness, and it's a certain mix of different things. This is a chunk, this is a shape. You put that shape onto the painting surface, and then you just repeat, you keep doing it. Um, I often tend to start with big dark shapes and I work my way eventually to big light shapes. That's usually kind of my approach for the face and the neck and the chest area and then uh, often I work my way into the hair. Um, I like to, often there's kind of a dark zone on the side of the face here so uh, I'll get kind of a darker umber or something that kind of frames the side of the face where the darkness of the hair, like on this subject. Uh, and I, you know, I'll fill in some basic shapes and shape colors for the hair. And then often the next thing I do is I jump into the clothing. Um, I, don't, I don't usually try to tackle the background until uh, I've got more, that's kind of a, something that's often towards the end for me. Um, not all the way at the end, but certainly in the back half of the painting. So, um, you know, sometimes I, I save the hair for later as well, but in this painting, uh, I did jump. 
from the face to the hair and then started working on the clothing. So clothing, clothing is certainly something that um, has been a work in progress for me. Uh, I, I've struggled to get the texture of clothing. Uh, that's something that I've not really approached anything resembling realistic uh, textures. Um, I'm more so trying to work on the, the kind of color shape thing I talked about, like trying to block in the right, um, the right colors where they should be. That's, that's the biggest step for me. So um, in this painting, I feel like I was actually pretty successful. I had some, uh, some confident brush strokes, which sometimes is a problem for me. Like I've seen from other artists that are more experienced how confident their brush strokes are. They know where they want to put something and they know how they want to push the brush, how they want to uh, uh, kind of lay down that paint. Uh, that's been difficult for me, but I think I'm getting better. And I do think I, I did a better job on that here, on this painting. Um, and we'll see, particularly in the end, we'll see if I remember to uh, to mention it when we get closer to the end of this painting time lapse, but um, there are some brush strokes that that um, were intentional, that were confident and looked uh, how I wanted them to look, which uh, is kind of cool. I mean that that's that's a fun thing when you have intent and it it comes to fruition in what you're trying to do. That's not always something that I've been able to do, so I'm glad for that. Uh, so in this stage of the painting, now I'm trying to lay down some of the light elements. This is a piece where I have the woman sitting at a desk, sitting in a chair, and there's supposed to be a very, it's a dark room with a strong light source coming in, and it's touching her hair and her face, and it should be kind of angling against the wall um, and being picked up just kind of in an isolated space here. Um, light is definitely something I'm trying to practice. Uh, it's a challenging thing to get right and it's definitely something that I've been working on. So I don't think it, this obviously wasn't a perfect result that, you know, room for improvement always with everything, but um, trying to get the right light look, I think worked. I think overall that actually did happen here. Um, but it was, there was some kind of, uh, trial and error with some aspects of it. So like the wall itself, I'm not sure if I entirely got the right textures there. Um, or I say textures, but the right look, the right kind of, uh, like standing back a little bit from the finished painting the impression that you get the impression that you get looking at it is that right i'm not completely sure it's pretty solid but especially relative to some of my past uh some of my past efforts but uh so yeah that that's kind of a work in progress i guess um another thing that i wanted to talk about with this painting is the the color conversation so uh, there are obviously a lot of blues here but i wanted it to be to have some emphasis on hitting the primary colors and different versions of the primary colors so like highlights of blue everywhere obviously highlights of red in the robe and then highlights of yellow in the table that is kind of what my intent was here. That's what I was going for. So um, the worry for me, though, is with yellow and blue, I don't want green. And because I am not always, <laughs> I don't always know exactly what I'm doing with the um, color mixing and blending. Uh, some of it's like just sort of trying things on the fly and seeing what happens. I knew that I didn't want green, but I was really worried about where the light needed yellow highlights or where 
there needed to be yellow that touched blue. If I blended too much on the painting surface, was that going to turn green? That was a big concern for me. Uh, and this is a challenge that is, I've bumped up against with clouds sometimes, where uh, I'm trying to kind of get the sky touched off with some blue, and I'm worried about sunlight, how that yellow is going to interact. Um, usually I can get it okay, but I've, I've seen some paintings that I've done in the past where um, it may not be immediately obvious, but if you look at it, there's definitely some green in the sky, and that that is definitely not intentional when I do it. So uh, this one, I was, I was really, I considered it to be a challenge that I was aware of ahead of time and I was on the lookout for. Like, how's that blue and yellow going to interact? Uh, and in this case, it turned out okay. I, I think that uh, I didn't really end up um, getting that green anywhere that I can see. It, it turned out fine and I, I made sure not to blend I made sure not to blend too much on the painting surface it, it's the blending happened on the palette and was as intentional as I could make it and then pushed it onto the painting surface without a bunch of extra um, a bunch of extra action so speaking of colors uh, I did mean to mention some of them early off since this is the second video that I've done with a, a palette uh, off to the side. Uh, I'd like to keep doing it if I can keep keep the technical uh, demands of that going. Uh, I'd like to keep sharing that. I think it's a useful thing to do. Um, and maybe I'll refine how that looks a little bit more, make it a little easier to see. Uh, I want to make the palette bigger and easier to see without it dominating all of the video space. So we'll, we'll kind of work out, I'll work out the kinks of that. But um, since the palette's there, you can see how I mix colors a little bit. Um, right in the middle, I like to put my titanium white and my raw umber. Those are right next to each other there. Uh, and then off to the side of the raw umber, I've got ultramarine blue. Um, and then above that to the top left, you see a bunch of mixing zones where I get crazy with gray colors uh, that's where my grays and my bluish grays and uh, all of that stuff comes together um, I also a lot of flesh tone blending happens on the bottom of the palette uh, that's where I keep my uh, yellow ochre and then sort of a little higher I've got the cadmium red that I, I tend to blend with that uh, and then there's a, a blush and there's also um, siennas to the left and then a cadmium yellow as well. Uh, and I, I use those for flesh tones a lot, along with the raw umber too. Um, and then just sort of that bottom right space is just the blending zone for all those flesh tones, dark and light flesh tones. Um, so that's kind of how I approach it. I, I don't think this palette placement is optimal, but the thing about me is I'm very much a creature of habit and once I start down a path sometimes it's hard for me to get off of that path uh, one of my future goals though is to to learn from or at least kind of research how pros do it how professionals do it like how do they organize their palettes where do they put the colors what's the optimal way to do this because they're probably is an optimal way I just don't know what it is so there's, there's probably a way that they like teach in school that makes sense so but this is the way that I do it for now um, I will say this this is just a regular sized palette I think I got it off, off Blick um, and I wish I had more palette space I don't know how much is enough because I could probably always find <laughs> more stuff I want to blend or mix but I kind of feel like this is a little too small of a space I, I would like to have some more room uh, and I've seen some other artists use a, a table with a glass top and that glass on top is just where they have their palettes 
that's actually kind of a cool idea. Uh, maybe something I should explore because it would be nice to have a little more real estate. Uh, but I do lay down paper towels underneath it, um, and that's a nice, convenient, uh, like there's a bunch of paper towel to the left and to the right. I lay the brushes down on the right, and then I sort of uh, clean and dry the brushes off to the left of the palette. So that's kind of how I approach the, the functional use of the palette. Um, so anyways, enough about the palette. Getting back to the, the painting itself, uh, we're getting towards the end stages of this one. Uh, you can see that um, it really started coming together uh, towards the end. Um, the light source, I think, looks fine. Um, I put the finishing touches on the subject, and you can see there's some of those uh, more confident brush strokes that I was, I was talking about. Um, in particular, like the robe and uh, kind of the dress where the folds of the fabric are. Um, I knew what I wanted to do there and I tried to be as confident as I could putting those colors down. And even though this is maybe not even one of the best that I've done, I, from my perspective, actually putting the paint down, I really like it a lot because it did feel like I, I had intent and, and, and went with it. So, um, it, a more confident portrait than usual for me, which is nice. Uh, so it's nice to accomplish things that you were going for. And so that kind of wraps this one up. Uh, I think I'm to the about to the end of what I wanted to say. Certainly, if there are any comments or questions, I'd love to hear hear from anyone who has thoughts about this. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you for the next one.